Hello everybody, this is Havoc and welcome back to Against the Storm in our tutorial for absolute beginners. In the very first episode, we went over some settings, set up the world map. In the last episode, we established our settlement and all of the things to consider. Well, probably not all of them. And then we went through our first year. You'll see now that we are on Drizzle Year 2. And today is where we start... Um, advancing the settlement as it were we're going to explore some glades so you can see what's going to happen we're going to start catering to our villagers and their complex needs and how to set up some industrial processes now again have to remind you none of this is like absolutely set in stone this is how i have played how i have understood the game does not mean i'm an expert nor should you base your entire strategy around what i do that being said do you have 80 hours in the game and that's not too shabby considering all other things. Now, what we need to do, we have established that uh, we have our basic resource gatherers. We have a couple of industrial outputs, including making some planks and things of that nature. We have set up, just got set up, our weaver, which will allow us to have fabric, which is the basis for what we will eventually place down, which is our clothier. We don't have the space for it yet, but we will certainly get the space when it's time. We have our ancient hearth up to level one. We're going to aim for level two in this episode so I can show you briefly how to do that. It's not very difficult. And the hope is that we're able to uh, see some more advanced functions in the game. That way we can do all the stuff and things. Now, one of the first things I'm gonna show you, and again, this is not an early game thing. You will have to unlock this in the Citadel upgrades and that is rain punk engines. I mentioned in the last time, there are three types of water. There's drizzle, clearance, and storm water. Most buildings, especially production related buildings, will have the ability to add a rain punk engine. And you'll see here that it takes storm water. Now we don't have storm water yet. We can acquire it in a few different ways, but we're gonna go ahead and connect some pipes. You can see that we can build pipes right now if we did a crude workstation. But well, we're going to connect the pipes anyways. We have the ability to, and this is what you see when that happens. Now, as you can see, this engine consumes two unit of water per minute for each ongoing production cycle. In this production cycle, you will see that production increases the chance for extra production and then the increased production by 50%. Toggling this all the way when you have water available will significantly increase the production level of this. Over here on the engine two, you see that workers gain plus five resolve if the rain engine is working, up to 10 resolve. Now, mind you, this is consuming a lot of a lot of storm water right here, but also we could get plus 10 resolve, which probably would add plus three overall, depending on the other production cycles. So we're not gonna do that right now, but we are going to aim to launch our rain engines and be able to do that. Now again, every uh, most buildings will have them showing so for instance the furnace uses storm water clothier uses clearance we have the mine actually doesn't which i'm kind of surprised by actually uh, considering that it's been used uh, you know like in real life and so most of these production buildings will have the type of water and they will always designate it if so now to collect the rainwater we have geyser pumps which will be hopefully discover some, some geysers that we can slap some geyser punks on. But essentially, this can uh, harvest different types of water. But we also have the rain collector. This collects rainwater, crafting powerful rain engines. The type of rainwater depends on the season. So that's something that we need to think about as well. Now, obviously, during the drizzle year, you're going to get drizzle water. During the clearance year, you're going to get clearance water with that. And then during the storm, you're going to get storm water. If you do a rain collector, which we probably will eventually, it will only again collect the rain during that season, no other time. So you got to kind of judge whether that's worth it or whether it's worth investing and in trying to find some other glades. Now, you'll also remember that we do have avoiding glades at the moment. We're trying to craft some space and some open ground for us to be able to expand and do all the things on so that's kind of the first target here but we are going to open up some glades and we are going to open up uh, we're, let's let's go in this direction uh, we will go right here because we do have the fertile soil so what we're going to do we're going to start out we're going to have uh, one guy here i am going to designate that he opened that up then eventually we'll say hey prioritize that as well 
Uh, and we could actually go ahead, expedite this process by doing that right there. All right, now what we want to do, we have plenty of plant fiber. We don't want to use leather or reeds because we just don't have enough. We are not going to allow training gear because we don't need it. None of our species need training gear. So we're just going to disable it entirely. Packs of goods would be nice, but we want them to focus on fabric. So we can see, we can do a priority, excuse me, right here, which means they will continually make fabric until we have 20, and then they will go make anything that does not have the priority as well. Now, harpies excel, specialization bonus for cloth. So we are going to have them make that fabric. And then when the space clears up, we are going to have them, uh, we're, we'll use them for the clothiers. So we can ensure, you can already see, that we have everything going on there. So we're gonna speed this up just a little bit. We're gonna let them chop through this small glade, have some fun with it. And in the meantime, we have plenty of wood. We need to go ahead and work on our decorations. So we're going to expand our decorations a bit by adding that like so. And again, this is where you can kind of have some fun and make some fun decorations. And then we also need four aesthetic decorations. And what I like to do here, you don't have to, you can do whatever you want to in this game. I like to put down the big garden because it counts as four. And to be quite frank, you may not start out with this, but I really do just enjoy the look of this, of this uh, punk dude. So we're definitely rocking that. And then I'm gonna drop another bench there. And then I myself, I really enjoy making grid uh, grid things for my people. So we're going to have kind of a designated garden space just right there. And we already have the population, so it's going to work out very, very well. There we go. And you can see we're already at level two, which gives us plus 10% global production speed and increases uh, our, our hearth resistance by 150. There we go. So now we can see that the next level will require significantly more. We're not going to get to that in today's episode. I will tell you that because it's quite a long ways and it's quite a lot of stuff to do. But the good news is, is that we already have a services building, so we don't have to worry about it. We have more orders. It's been the countdown's timer's gone down and we have three options. We have the capacity to deliver. Well, we don't have the capacity, but the goal would be in eight minutes to deliver 40 mushrooms and 40 herbs. Now we could limit consumption, which would help us get there. In which case we would get some decent things we could have three buildings with rain engines installed and be able to get a crate of stone bundle of plant fiber and oil vessels or we can complete three trade routes that are worth at least six amber we'd get a supplier then more amber and box of porridge we're going to go with that one and then over here eight minutes to gather 40 berries and 40 herbs the perk to tea production would be nice but I think we're going to go over here because I want to get an increase in coat production and two additional humans will come with each new group. That's actually pretty good. As much as I love this idea and giving beavers a plus to resolve, we're going to get a larger benefit from happy humans. And all we have to do is get their resolve above 26 for 30 seconds. That's a piece of cake. Well, I won't say it's a piece of cake, but it'd at least be a little bit easier than the other things. So one of the other ways while we're waiting for our guys to chop down the glades is we do need to start working on the idea of housing our our settlers as it were um excuse me we can definitely do that we're gonna just do fell all trees for now there we go because they aren't they aren't getting the hint but we have humans beavers and harpies we're going to slap down some beaver houses now it does take eight uh eight wood per so that's something we have to think about. And I like my grids. So we're only gonna drop two beaver houses. But to be frank, we only need, no, we need three. We need one more. We can find a place, this over here for now. We're gonna keep all the beavers together. We're actually gonna kind of have a little beaver district as it were, because again, I like designing my cities to be well laid out. There we go, very nice. And then on this back side, since we do need more comfort decorations, more aesthetic, and some harmony. I'm going to put an overgrown fence right here to just be like, okay, well, this is my section. And I guess I can't do a corner, which is very unfortunate. Uh, let's have some, let's have some, uh, some bushes and, uh, let's do a flower bed and our night fern. That'll, that'll look fancy. 
So we're going to fell all trees. They're going to start cutting through that. And then we are going to start prioritizing all of our beaver houses. Perfect. This is a small glade. You'll note it's small because it doesn't have any of the dangerous glade notations or the forbidden glade notation. And inside, upon, you could totally pause the game when this happens, we'll be able to see, okay, cool. We have a dewberry bush. We have a small drizzle, uh, drizzle looing nest. We have 11 units of fertile soil and a small abandoned cache. Now these caches are great. So we do have a spot to go ahead and designate our farm. They will clear it out. We'll establish a farm in a little bit. But your small abandoned caches are a glade event. And this is what I meant when I, I did believe it was last episode, where we have a glade event for a cache, in which case we could spend some resources, break it open and get the goodies inside. Or we can send it to the Citadel if we had tools. We would get gold or amber, excuse me, and half a reputation point. Now, we are in a pretty darn good spot food-wise. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Now, I don't have tools, so we can't do anything with this just yet. But if we were to, we would be able to, again, assign villagers to it and hit investigate. We don't have that right now, so I'm not going to worry about it. But this is your small glade. We're going to let them clear this out, and then we're going to head over to the dangerous glade to show you the really cool things that happen. All right, our beaver houses are up and running and they look great. And so we actually do get the stacked benefits here. So that's awesome. That's great to know and allows us to push even. Now I just unlocked upgrades for beaver houses. Just, uh, I think actually in the first episode. So we have the ability to upgrade, which is really, really cool. Now we don't have the goods to do this. But for instance, living uh, villagers living in the house with this upgrade move 15% faster or a strategically built wall can do wonders. This room will have room for one more additional. That's awesome. And then a small reminder, villagers living in a house with this upgrade get one to resolve or all trade routes are 5% faster for every villager living in a house with this upgrade. So if we had, what was this, six, we would the trade routes would go 30% faster. That's a fantastic upgrade. So for now, though, we are simply living in these areas and they are doing fantastically well. And we'll get to build our farm. So we have farmland. Fertile soil is required for that to work. And we are going to place our small farm. And you'll notice here that there is a radius in which these farms do operate. That is crucial because obviously if there's fertile soil outside of that radius, then it won't work. So we do have, oh nice, and it lines up very well. I love it. We're gonna place this right here, and you're gonna see the specialization bonus. Now, all of these farms, plantations, herb gardens, have the capacity to make um, two resources. In this case, it's vegetables and grain. Now what you can do is you can specialize. So if you had two of these small farms, you could say only focus on veggies or only focus on grain. Now that really doesn't truly matter in my opinion, unless for instance, you only had enough human villagers to specialize in one farm, in which case you wanted to make more grain than you wanted to make vegetables and you have them there. Otherwise, it's not really that big of a deal. In my opinion, I am uh, more than happy to be told otherwise, but I just don't see the problem. Um, we are going to avoid, oh, they opened up another glade. Now, mind you, opening up every glade increases our hostility. And this is a reason why, especially for new people, we should avoid glades, except marked. There we go. There we go. That's a fantastic one right there. And so that way it doesn't open up too quickly. In this case, we have flax field, which would be great once we uh, run out over here. And we have a glade event of a small encampment. Now we could send these guys to the Citadel. We have enough eggs to do so, in which case we get an amber pouch. But this destroyed camp with survivors, we could add them to our group. And that's what we're going to do. Now, we do have to be careful because, again, too many villagers will put us over the edge. And if we hit that tier two, gaining reputation doesn't lower uh, impatience and resources you sacrifice burn hotter and faster. So we have to keep mind uh, very, very close eye on what we are doing overall. Now, over here in our weaver, you can see we have plenty of fabric and you'll notice that this building is idle because they have completed all of the tasks they can. This is a great time to bring in a clothier 
Admittedly, we may go like right here just to create our uh, our area. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and punch that up as well. Nice. We have two humans. Perfect. And just like that, we pretty much use up all of our people. That's fine. That's A-OK -okay with us. We're not ready for this. So I'm going to unmark that and we need to move them to a new spot that will let them uh, harvest some things a little bit more efficiently and hope that we can uh, gain some ground to expand a little bit. All right, we have our villagers. The event was done over here and we can, again, we can put some harpies in and they are going to start making cloaks, which should really bring up the benefits once they start cranking that out. And remember, we need, we need to get humans resolve up and deliver some grain in order to get those, uh, those buffs to the cloaks. But you'll see here, we're about to make a whole heckin' lot here, and it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. What we can also do while we are waiting to find a geyser pump, we can build a rain collector. As far as I know, rain collectors do not need to be anywhere specifically. They don't, I don't believe they need access to uh, industrial buildings or anything like that. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but I don't think that I am. Now, these guys has a 10% chance of doubling their yield, idle building because they harvest during the clearance here. And so we definitely have to wait until the next round in order to prioritize that. But for now, we are just going to hang out. We have to let uh, space grow before we can expand everything that we need to do. And now's the perfect time though. We have a harvester's camp that has soaked up all, used up all the resources. It's not a problem because you'll get that alert, which is an alert that I have checked. And then, as I mentioned in the first episode, or the second episode rather, you'll be able to see where resource nodes are. If we were way over here, you'll be able to see, oh cool, I just have to keep going over here. And I have found an overabundance of resources there. Once you understand the mechanics of the game, things do make a lot more sense. It's just getting to that point where understanding them is, is just the norm. And of course, this is where we could also uh, bring in some more decorations and things like that to fill in all these little small pockets of stuff. So for instance, we could have an ancient tombstone. We could use a fire shrine. Let's do a fire shrine with a lizard's post right there. And these guys are going to soak up all of the things and they are going to continue making the things as well. We have our rain collector, which you can see right now is using being used to get clearance lane or clearance water. And we're about to hit our year two storm season. Once again, the game auto pauses as we realize things are going to happen and we're going to see awesome. So that's going to kick in. Now, again, we're going through this year with no resolve in the negative. So I don't need to change any of my production values to cater to the storm event in this instance. However, that will probably change in the next season. So we'll see you when we get there. And just like that, it's year three. Not only is it year three, but you can see that our resolve is now boosting up to 23 as a result of having access to coats and things of that nature. So now all we would need is grain. And we're working on that. It'll get there. Let's actually take out the veggies for this time around. And we'll do that in the future. Now, we have newcomers as well. We can take in two beavers or we can take in two harpies and a human. We're going to take the beavers because I would like to get another beaver guy in here working his way and making sure we have plenty of planks. And then we choose our cornerstone because again, every single year we get this done. Now, this is going to be a very difficult choice. We could take root delivery line, in which case this would stack and we would get six roots a minute. We could do Titan belt, which means the cost on trade routes, trade routes have packs of provisions. We, they are reduced by one. So if something costs one packs of provisions in order to trade with it, it now costs zero. It costs two and now costs one. Or we can have tanning racks, which gives plus two to leather production. We don't have anything using that right now, but our ranch produces that. So we're going to go with Titan Belt because we do need to get into trade anyways. That's going to be very crucial. It's one of our profit margin orders anywho. So let's go ahead and start working on that. We need to build a trading post. Don't have the ability to do that. We need to cut out this area. And then I'm slowly going to keep moving this guy over here 
we can tackle uh, all the area around it. Now there is one important thing to mention. You'll see here that our rain collector is currently collecting the drizzle water, which means that we actually have 24 out of 50. We could figure out what we wanted to have. Let's go ahead and get our pipes here. And we're gonna go ahead and go here where in, uh, production speed increases by 50% and increases for extra product yields by 25%. I could also go ahead and boost them since they are already above their resolve limit. It'll simply keep them up there a little bit more efficiently and for a little bit longer, which isn't too bad. And you can see here, we're gaining high resolve reputation bonuses. It's the drizzle season, which means they are planting and sowing the garden fields, which is going to be great. And then in the clearance season, they will harvest it. The storm season, they will plow, etc., etc. We have the capacity to boost our humans to get to that 26. We are just missing everything else. And here we go into the clearance season where you see everything is sprouting. And again, this is where the harvest will happen. I can finally complete that. And we've unlocked our next set. Now you can totally balance this the way you want to. The more orders you have, I do believe the quicker that this inflates, but I prefer like this because I enjoy how it works. And I like the challenge to be completely frank. Now, this is interesting. We could complete any three dangerous or forbidden glade events in 20 minutes. We're not there yet. I could not do this despite the, the reward, which would be five barrels a minute. That's incredible. I just can't do it. However, we could sell goods worth at least 35 amber, and we are working on using 90 units of rainwater in rain engines, in which case traders will arrive quicker Builders can carry more items and we get wildfire essence, which is required for our hearths. Or we can go into advanced logistics where we need another rain collector because we already have one. We could deliver 35 drizzle water and we could deliver 35 storm water. In this instance, we would get an increase to copper production, a box of pottery and more wildfire essence. I'm going to roll with this. This has more benefits for us. It'll take a little bit longer to do but it'll still be the best thing. And then our other order, the need for treatment fulfilled, which means we need tea. This is obvious because well, a tea infuser, infuser increases that production. Now only the harpies need this, and I would rather fulfill education and leisure instead of anything else. So we're not gonna roll with that. And instead we're going to get into our packs and production cycles because we only need 15 of each. And if we get this, all packs are produced 33% faster. Absolutely. So this is where your basic packs come in. Now, admittedly, there are productions that will do things like this. You can get your packs and develop them in other places. But that is uh, a little bit more advanced and it does require certain other buildings to come into effect. It's not something that we can do right now as far as I know, however, we can look and see a pack of crops and a pack of provision. We're going to get into our recipes. If I could spell, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Not a craps. All right. So the only building that we can currently build this in is our makeshift post. It can be better and utilize a lot less resources, but we have plenty and that's how it's just going to need to be. Now we need our pack of crops. Is there a better place for our packs of provisions? There is not. The makeshift post will handle both of those. So that's what we need to build. We're going to go ahead and build this, I guess, just right smack dab here. And that is going to allow us to designate. Again, we don't want anything else. We can't get anything else here. And we don't really want that. So we are going to prioritize our crops and our provisions. And then eventually a pack of building materials because we do need those in order to do our things here. So that's important, but more so we're wanting to set up for trade. All right, so here's an interesting thing that just happened. And as we are we are kind of uh, jumping forward in leaps and bounds now, I just got 11 grain, but it was used up immediately. So that means there is something in here that consumes grain. I don't know what it is. Let's take a look. We can type in grain as an ingredient and we can see they aren't consuming it. We don't have a field kitchen, but we don't have a stamping mill that works either. And in fact, we could get the stamping mill and use the roots, which is fine. So we don't have anything else that's currently being built. 
So that makes me think that someone is consuming raw goods, but I don't think that's how this works. It isn't. Interesting. I'll have to figure that out. And I did figure it out. I put someone in the main warehouse whose sole job is to deliver goods, even apparently if there isn't anyone there to do them. So someone, our little beaver guy, brought in 11 grains so that when someone gets here, they will take it over. Now though, we have boosted our humans for the time being, and we have gathered enough grain. There we go. Simple as that. It's a pie. Piece of cake. It's a pie. And so we, now we have that travel cost reduction, which is awesome and it's fantastic. We also now have the ability to cut into our dangerous glade while also creating our trading post. And so we are also going to do that, although I do want to move it to the edge here. And we have another reputation point, which means we can choose our buildings. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a brickyard right off the bat because we do need bricks. And this is a much more effective way to do it than anything we've been doing right now. We have the ability, we have the capacity to at least make some bricks. They are needed. Let's get to it. A hundred percent. We're going to move this guy, but even then, I'm not sure that a brickyard would be able to fit. It needs a little more room to squeeze, and that's fine. We could easily move this guy over here. We can move our brickyard here. Now, also, I will admit, we could uh, move this outside over to here, which we might end up doing because we don't want to crowd and get too few houses underneath our hearth. So we'll have to see how this rolls out, but I'm, I'm, I'm willing to put the brickyard here for now. And we built our first trade post. Well, it's really our only trade. And of course I have it paused because of my preferences. The trader depends on uh, who it is and how it, how it all functions. There are different traders throughout this entire thing, and they all come with different tradable goods, including different blueprints and or perks that we can purchase. Now, right now, I have no gold, so I can't purchase any of this. I would have to purchase gold from them at an extended um, inflated rate in order to then purchase this. But this would be a pretty good one. Plus one to grain production. We want to focus on grain to have enough for our, for our biscuits. That is very well worth it. But we do also have just the ability to buy grain like this, or we can purchase any of this other stuff as long as we had the production value to. So I'm going to put in all of my trade goods. We're gonna look and see anything else that we have a lot of. We have a ton of wood. So I'm going to, uh, we'll put in, we'll just say 80. I want 13 there. You'll notice there's a deficit. One of the cool features about this game that was added relatively recently is the ability to auto-correct that to the closest form. So you see, instead of 80, we need 121. I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna turn right around and buy mold supply. Now, anytime these guys make grain, they're going to make more of it, which is stinking fantastic. We're also going to enable our vegetables because, well, we do need vegetables. Now what I could do, I do need some pipes as well. I could say, hey, what do we need? What do we need? What buildings do we need? Let's take a look at that. We do need some clearance pipes for this. This guy uh, takes water. These people are already rocking and rolling all the other stuff. And these guys take clearance as well. So let's go ahead and how many do we have right now? We have six. Let's buy six more. Now what we have to do, we don't have to equal to that. We can instead barter straight up. By hitting auto, I can see that, okay, that's good enough for me. Nothing else could come close. Nothing has that low of a resource value at all. And so we're just gonna have to take this and lose a wee bit of money. It's fine. Yeah. Now we have the ability to uh, use four more, or three more buildings rather, and get their stuff. We already have these two guys. We can move that there. We can get our, uh, our stamping mill. We have more than enough. And we have a beaver to go into it as well. Admittedly, we want to do this first. We want them to get that. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that works. And then if we had copper ore, which we may discover some, we could make some copper bar. But we're going to go ahead and pump that up. Because we don't really... Oh, here's the stormy season. All right, very cool. 
Well, we have that now and we have our production up and running, but we've also unlocked trade routes. Trade routes are great, but you can see they do require you to be able to have some stuff. Now we have the smoldering city and we have our other settlements from our previous thing. And the distance determines how long it takes for our active routes to come in. I'm going to only show available. So that way it's a lot easier to sift through. Now you'll see here, remember this costs zero because, well, the cost of what we have done has been reduced by so much. So I could sell 25 fabric. It won't cost me any packs of provisions, which is good because we're working on making some. And I will get 15 gold in four minutes and six seconds. We only have five herbs. I could sell that for one gold, not really worth it. However, remember, we also want to have three trade routes worth at least six gold. So that's something we can min max and we can figure out along the way. I need to turn off the favoring so that everyone will be in their right mind and right place. And now you see the effects of corruption. We are using so much rain from our rain engines that it is actually affecting the blight rot around our ancient hearth. It is starting to infect our world. And that's dangerous. It's terrifying. There is a way to combat it, and we can build a blight post to do so. Now, I would love for them to get rid of this first, so we can build a blight post close to our warehouse. But essentially, a blight post allows you to make blight fighters, which will use a purging fire to take care of these cysts, or whatever you want to call them. And that, in turn, will allow us um, to reduce the amount of corruption that is being experienced. So it's just something we need to think about, something we need to look forward to, and to figure out what will work uh, in all the things that we need to do. The trader is gone, by the way, which means in nine minutes, our new trader will come, in which case he'll have the potential for all of these. And he's willing to buy packs of goods, resources, advanced building materials, metal, and some crafting minerals. So if we want to prepare, if we could prepare for that, then we totally should and totally could. Now comes an interesting time because we have our largest settlement uh, group of newcomers yet. This could bring us in seven newcomers. That'll put us into hostility year two or tier two. So that's something we have to think about. But the benefits are well worth it. Yes, I'm definitely gonna go with these guys. And then we have our new cornerstone. So you see how this works. There's a repeated cycle over and over that will happen that will help you to figure things out. Now this is really cool. There's a lot of good things here. And again, we could reroll. I have two rerolls, but I don't think I'll do them. We could gain one global resolve every time you sell goods worth 50 amber. That's across the traders as well as the trade routes. That's a really good benefit. Woodcutters on discovering a glade during the storm grants us 10 tools. Now that's a really good min-max solution where you don't want your, uh, your beavers or your woodcutters rather to discover glades anytime they wanted to. We're gonna definitely, I think, pick that one, but let's look at the other ones. Global production speed is 33% faster, but traders will arrive 50% slower. That's a really good one as well. That means the production speed in which everything is made is increased by 33%. And then the work safety guide. Every villager with their need for education fulfilled uh, increases global production speed by 5%. So in theory, we have, we have 20 villagers who need education, which means that every villager, every one of those villagers would increase global production speed up to a hundred percent. And that's pretty darn cool. We're going to go with this. Traders arrive 50% slower. It's not one that I've ever picked. That does mean his time is uh, extended, but we have our trade routes, which are going to bat for us. We're never going to need our, our training gear. So we're going to do that. We have plenty of parts as well. And it's a great way to gain some awesome goods. So that's what we're going to do. That's going to allow us our trade. Ooh, almost allows our trade routes uh, to do the profit margin thing. That's okay. It's not a worry. We'll get through it. But now I have too many people. As you can see here, we already have our maximum population need, which means that we could and should start a new hearth. I don't know if we'll get to it today. Honestly, couldn't tell you. But you can see we could get up to tier three. And so we need to start going into, we got to go into our dangerous glade. That's going to give us a lot of room for expansion and to do all the things. Let's go ahead and just start filling people in to different areas where they are needed. There we go. 
Do we have... Nope, we still don't have any tools. This guy probably needs some help, but that's all right. And again, chances producing double yields is increased by 15%. Specialization bonus enabled. So were we to ever to get leisure or education filled up, we can do that. Now we do still need a lot of people housed. So we're going to do some basic housing things just to get those guys in. And then we're going to discover our first dangerous glade. I'm very excited. And I hope that uh, it isn't too underwhelming for ourselves. And here we go. We've unlocked our first dangerous glade. And just like the regular glade, we see an overview of everything going down. We have some sea marrow deposits, which is kind of, I do believe, require storm cutters or stone cutters, rather. We're going to go ahead and lay that down. But we also have dewberry bushes. We have drizzle water geyser. That's what we're looking for. A lot of fertile soil, a medium abandoned cache, and a forsaken crypt. Inside of your dangerous and your forbidden glades are these uh, dangerous and forbidden events. These are not like the things we've seen before. These have a countdown timer and will show have some pretty daggum bad things happen if you don't address it in time. In this case, we have 13 minutes to address the threat. If we don't, what was once taken must now be get back. All stored amber and wine will be lost and we get an impatience point. That's not good. Not good at all. So we have 13 minutes to figure out what to do with it. And we can do one of two things. We can tear it down. We have plenty of stuff to do that. However, you get minus five to global resolve for every 10 amber in the settlement's warehouses. Now this is only active when it's being worked on, so it'll be for four minutes and 30 seconds, which means that as of this point, mm, this is where we would want to go in here and we don't want to auto collect because that would cause an even bigger decrease. Now, if we did that, we would get a crate of sea marrow, chest of uh, coal, and then every time you open or send two abandoned caches to the Citadel, you gain plus one to resolve. So if we were to send this to the Citadel, we would get more resolve. Or we could calm the spirits if we had the capacity to do so. Calming the spirits would give us 15 gold and would give us half a reputation point with the Queen. Now, we don't have that. Our trader is a significant ways off. 10 minutes. No, we have to go with this one, which means we have to bear and grunt the weight of what is about to happen to us. And it's not like it's detriment. Well, it's not like it's the end of the world, but we do need to address it and address it quickly. So we're going to do that. We are going to put these people in. We are going to have them investigate and that is going to knock our stuff down. But with the ability for uh, global carrying capacity to be increased, we should be able to hit that, look at that, right off the bat. Our guys can hit it well enough, and we are all hunky -dunky. Perfect. I love it. I love how efficient everything is right now. It's just great. And then we're going to have a, these guys, well, let's see. We could use a plantation, and I think we are just going to have to grunt and bear through the fact that we will waste... One of the resources and there's a min max option that we can do there we go now we are low on food we have been consuming a lot in order to make our provisions uh, that's just temporary you do that and make them use grain instead if we wanted to but yeah all of that stuff is just going to have to be worked on as it is and we only have uh we just need a few more well quite a few packs of proof but they're working on it and hopefully they'll be able to get it pretty soon all right, so there's four seconds left. They are going to be able to nab it just in time. Awesome. Everyone's gonna boost back up to where they belong. We're going to auto collect, which is going to give us a lot more goods across the board. Not only that, we have a couple of things to explore over here and we'll address our order. We have our drizzle water geyser. We do have the ability to put that up. And then what we're going to do is we will put an, autom uh, an automaton in there we don't have to use up a villager in order to have it work. Now, that does cost resources, so we have to think about that and be concerned about it, but it will still be a good thing overall. We also have discovered our first large uh, resource node. Now, this, as you see, requires an herbalist camp. Not a, uh, not a mini herbalist camp, but a large one. We don't have that blueprint, so we actually cannot use it. That sucks, but that's just the decisions that we've made throughout. Now, what I really want to do is I want to put two more villagers into here. But I don't have any, but I can find some. 
If you click on the humans, or you click on any of the species, you'll be able to see where everyone is across the board. This is incredibly helpful. It is super helpful to see where your villagers are and if they are in their optimized spaces. In this instance, we have a brickyard person. We're gonna put both of those inside of here so they're optimized. We now have a beaver person that we could replace into there for the time being. That way everyone is happy, everyone gets to work on all the things they get to work on, and we'll be good. Now we've just completed our profit margin of three trade routes worth at least six gold. We get our another thing here, and looky there. We have an herbalist camp, which is exactly what we need in order to harvest these guys. You can see that we had a small herbalist camp that is automatically upgraded. We need food. So we definitely need to put some people there. Our harpy fits perfect. This is all very nice. Our geyser has been made as well. And you can see we could put a person in there or we can automaton. It takes wildfire essence and it takes pipes, but that's okay. And we could increase it all the way up here if we wanted to. I don't really know that I want to do that because it is simply going to harvest, um, you know, two drizzle water every single time which should be good. Now, unfortunately, we are still growing here and we have not made our blight post. So we are going to work on a couple of things and then we're gonna end up expanding into another hearth once we get this settlement thing taken care of. We'll go a small hearth. You can see that it will fit. Now, one thing to note is you can't overlap here. You don't have overlapping regions, but this doesn't overlap at all. And it's outside so we could put yeah that's going to be a great spot for this at the moment and you can see because we have way too many people we could transfer eight over to here and everything would work well a few more things to address we have another order to pick from we need to do, deliver 50 amber and we need a market if we did that we would gain an additional active trade slot slot basket of pies pickled goods or complete any three events by using loyalty, we gain 20 random goods every time a villager dies. We haven't had any villagers die. However, I do believe this is much more approachable, so we're going to go with that one. We also have more things here. We have a ton of resin. We could certainly do that. We have a lot of those guys. Oof, this is a hard choice. We definitely don't want that. You know what? We're not going to do anything because we still need our pack of provisions. We're going to hold off. We have quite a number of amber, so we don't really need it. We now also have our herbalist camp, and we have our ability to build, I do believe it was our supplier. Yes, it was. Awesome. We're in a decent spot. We need to... We need to... We have our flour. Did I misspell biscuits? Again, I wish I could spell. Awesome. So normally... We would have to use this guy. However, we have a cookhouse, which uses a little bit less flour and a little bit less goods. So we are going to build that. Now we just need the darn space. Because goodness gracious, there is a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and build, what was it? I do believe it was our cookhouse. Yes, that is it. There is no space. I mean, it doesn't really have to go right here. This is really kind of uh, uh, the, uh, let's put it here. There we go. Very nice. And now you see we are up to level two, which means that gaining reputation doesn't lower impatience and resources that we were to sacrifice would be uh, consumed significantly faster. We're still doing okay though. We can see that this is stacking three times now because we're at hostility level two, but it's not enough to where it is wrecking us or should we be concerned? So I'm okay, I'm all right. We're doing okay. And with that in mind, we're going to end the episode right here. When we come back, the civilization will have grown, or rather the settlement will have grown just a little bit, and will probably end up being the very last episode. Simply because our goal here is to try and simply win the settlement, and that will kind of complete the basic gameplay loop of the entire series. So guys, thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do all the things to support the channel, Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial series. This is Havoc. I'll see you in the final episode.